Today is the 7th of September, which means it is World Duchenne Awareness Day. Duchenne muscular dystrophy is a degenerative condition that has no known cure. And Duchenne affects about one in every 3,500 boys that are born in Australia. Most of them who contract this disease won't survive beyond their 20s. One of Australia's leading researchers into the disease is Professor Gordon Lynch from the University of Melbourne. I had a chat to him to find out a little bit more about exactly what Duchenne muscular dystrophy does to the people that afflicts. This is a very serious disorder. At the moment, we have no cure for the condition. We knew the genetic basis back in 1987. It was discovered that there was this genetic defect to this dystrophin gene which causes the lack of this protein, this protein dystrophin and this protein is actually protecting muscles, it's around the individual muscle fibres, it confers protection to those muscles. If you don't have that, that protein it makes the muscles very fragile, very susceptible to breaking and they don't repair as well. So healthy muscles tend to get broken down and then repair very well. In Duchenne muscular dystrophy the repair processes don't work as well and on a progressive basis you you lose the size of the muscle and then of course you lose the strength of the muscle and that impacts upon uh, the ability to walk the ability to breathe normally and so on so this is a serious disorder and something that researchers around the world are trying to unravel where is research around the world focusing in on the research is is going on different fronts. We've got a genetic condition, so therefore we're trying for genetic cures, so trying to have a gene replacement or some form of uh, similar gene that can take the place of dystrophin. So genetic therapies are, are a big push around the world. There's potential stem cell therapies that could be applied. So we've got muscle fibres being broken down. Is there a way that we can introduce healthy cells into these diseased muscles, which could actually help retain the muscle tissue and make it grow as efficiently as it can. And the other approach is to try and control the pathology itself. So that might mean um, ways to prevent an inflammation that's often happening within the muscle. If we can look at ways to protect the muscles in some way, either making them smaller or larger. If we can regulate certain biochemical pathways that regulate the size of the muscle uh, all of these things relate to a pharmacological intervention so the most well-known and uh, the, the current gold standard drug is actually a, what we call a corticosteroid called prednisone or another one is deflazacort these aren't anabolic steroids they're actually glucocorticoids they're called they actually have the opposite effect of an anabolic steroid they actually make muscle fibers smaller and the reason for that is they're largely anti-inflammatory but keeping the muscle fibers smaller the, the view is that potentially that may help protect them and, from damage and allow the muscle to survive for a lot longer and so once the boys usually are, are diagnosed by their neurologist most patients will go on to these glucocorticoids, these, this drug called prednisone, and they'll stay on, 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 the, on these corticosteroids for the duration of their lives. So that's the, that's the current gold standard treatment. There are many different ways that we can try and attack the problem. So there's the attacking the pathology directly, and a lot of the work that we do in my laboratory is centred around tackling those different ways in which we can perhaps combat the pathology but we've also you know we've got other issues related to genetic therapies and cell therapies which are all on the table and you know the research the research question is a tough one but there's a lot of effort from our group and from many groups around Australia and around the world trying to come up with a, a cure or at least to improve the quality of lives for patients with uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So that is Professor Gordon Lynch from the University of Melbourne. The time is a quarter to six on ABC Local Radio. Well, Safan Thakur is in a pretty unique position as a Duchenne muscular dystrophy researcher. The 23-year-old is one of over a 1,000 Australian men and boys who are living with the disease. Savant is studying a PhD through Melbourne University to try and find better treatments for the disease that he is afflicted with. So when I was... A child that always used to wonder why I could not perform the function that many of our other, many of my other peers could, why, why I was different from them. And do, during my trips to the 
Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne as a child. I met some wonderful scientists and researchers and clinicians and seeing the wonderful work that they did, I became really inspired to do something about the condition I have. I was really curious as to what parts of my body were affected and how I could do something about it. What parts of your body are affected as it currently stands? I use an electric wheelchair. I've got very limited movement of my arms and my heart is affected. My breathing muscles are affected. So I have to use overnight ventilation and I have to go to hospital quite a lot for medical appointments and just all the investigative things. How are you going about your research? Yeah, so the University of Melbourne has been very good. So the Disability Liaison Unit in conjunction with Professor Lynch and the department have arranged for a research assistant to perform all the experiments under my direction. So I direct my research assistant to perform all my experiments and she assists me with taking notes and all sorts of other things, so getting me set up during the day, taking stuff out of my bag and all sorts of things. It's quite inspiring to think that, you know, you're spending the valuable time that you have trying to find some possible solutions to uh, to Duchenne, which is obviously a big problem for young males around the world. Do you hope that you might come up with the answer in the coming years? I, I really do. I, I really hope that yeah, I can do something which will improve the quality of life for everyone affected with this disorder. It may not be a cure, but even any, any treatment that could improve their lives would, would be really good. Today is World Deshaun Day. What would you like to say to, to people in the community uh, out there about awareness, raising awareness for this disease and, and hopefully raising funds for more research into it? But currently there is very little knowledge in the community about the disorder and I think the main purpose of the World Deshaun Awareness Day is to raise awareness and raise the profile of Deshaun amongst the media, the general public and the politicians because without this I think it will be very difficult to find a cure and improve the quality of life for everyone affected by this condition. The intention behind the day is not to seek empathy but just highlight how boys and men with Duchenne and can live lives on their own terms and be useful participants in society. I would Encourage all your listeners to visit www.duchenne.org.au to purchase the Duchenne Darwin to increase awareness of the condition. All funds raised will support education and awareness programs. So that was Savant Thakur you just heard from there. He's a Duchenne muscular dystrophy researcher from Melbourne University who is actually afflicted with the disease.